everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and I'll be hanging out with you today as we are nearing the end of our series on the living world. Topic for the day is going to be action potentials. So let me go ahead and get you your objectives, and then we'll get on into the materials. So by the end of this video, here are the things that I need you to know or be able to do. First up, explain the concept of an action potential. Second, recognize the role of voltage-gated sodium channels in action potentials. And you could just say recognize the role of voltage-gated channels in action potentials. And finally, discuss the conduction of an action potential down an axon. So before we start talking about action potentials and all that good stuff, we need to talk a little bit about the idea of polarization. If you remember back to when we were talking about water, we talked about water having a positive end and a negative end, so it was polar. Anytime you've got two separate charges, you have a polar situation. So if you remember what we were talking about in another video, the inside of the cell is negative and the outside of the cell is positive. This is a polar situation because you have a difference in charge across space. Now, our nerves can become hyperpolarized in which the difference in charge from one side to the other gets bigger. So this would be come like just a greater difference in charge from one side to the other. Depolarization is the opposite where the difference in charge lessens. Now this idea of action potential is going to work on this idea of hyperpolarization and depolarization. So get it into your head before we get going that if you are making the difference from one side of the membrane to the other greater, it's hyperpolarization. If that difference is going down, it is depolarization. Which is kind of important as we start talking about graded potentials. A graded potential is kind of like a slow electrical leak. So we'll talk about in a second an action potential, which is a huge change in uh, polarization. This is like a slow change. So some of your ions kind of leak from one side of the membrane to the other. This is going to be a stimulus that causes like a graded response. And by graded response, I mean that a small stimulus causes a small response, medium stimulus causes a bigger response, and large stimulus causes the largest response. So the response is proportional to the stimulus that is affected on it. And we'll find out in a second with action potentials that's not the case at all. So graded potential, know that the signal is going and it is just a little, like it's commiserate with the stimulus that started the uh, change in polarization, which is contrasted with the idea of an action potential. Now, in an action potential, you've got a fantastic shift in membrane potential, and it's based on ion-gated channels. In an action potential, if you look off to the right there, you will see that you have a huge change in the polarity of the cells, or yeah, of the membrane. So start out down here with a resting potential around negative 80 millivolts. As that action potential goes off, we shoot way up to where we go into the positive range and then come back down. So this is the signal like shooting through the axon. Now, the thing that causes this dramatic shift in electrical charge is the uh, sodium and potassium ions moving across the membrane. If you remember the other day we talked about how sodium potassium pumps set up a pretty strong gradient from one side of the membrane to the other. In an action potential there are gated channels that fly open. Those uh, ions kind of flow back and forth to try to balance out the difference and in doing so they give off a lot of electrical energy. Now Action potentials are based on voltage-gated channels. And what a voltage-gated channel is, is this. It's basically a channel that is usually closed, but when a certain electrical voltage gets to it, it flies open. So we would go from being closed to being an open channel. And as soon as that channel is open, obviously ions can rush through it. So most of the time these channels are closed off, but as a stimulus comes along, it reaches the, I guess, the trigger point or the threshold of these channels. They fly open and the obvious uh, ions flow inside. Now, know that this idea of an action potential is kind of a positive feedback loop where as these guys get triggered, they let ions flow in. The flow of ions flying inside causes a stimulus that channel that triggers the next set of ion channels to fly open and so on down the line so you've got something where the uh, I guess stimulus to open is being propagated by the channels opening and the charge changing from one side of the membrane to the other with action potentials you need to realize it is an all or nothing response where with a graded potential we kinda had a situation where you could get like a little bump 
medium bump, big bump, based on how big the stimulus was. Action potentials aren't like that. Once an action potential goes, it goes. And so this right here, this kind of situation, would kind of decrease over the length of an axon. So if you've only got a small stimulus, it's going to kind of like peter out as it goes down the axon. With a action potential, this thing is all or nothing. So you get your resting potential, stimulus hits. When that stimulus hits, you get depolarization. So all the sodium is flowing into the axon, which changes your membrane potential quite a lot. And then once you have hit that magic point where it's kind of like the top of the action potential, everything repolarizes. The potassium leaves, things go back to normal. We actually undershoot where the uh, potential goes down for a while and then we go back to our resting potential. So where with a graded potential you've got kind of like, I don't know, a stretched out response. This is just like boom and then down. Okay. Um, depolarization, which is this piece right here, doesn't happen until a threshold has been re reached. So these guys can change membrane potentials all day long, just kind of bump it along until they reach that magic threshold that causes the depolarization event, you will not get an action potential. But once that depolarization event has happened, it goes and there's nothing really stopping it. Now I just want to walk you through a little bit of the process here of how this happens. So let's kind of take this step by step as we look at this diagram. We're going to start down here at number one and notice the numbers here correspond to our graph right here. And if you look in your book, you'll find the same graph. So in our resting state, number one right here, we've got what we talked about the other day where you've got potassium inside the cell, you got sodium outside the cell, negative inside, positive outside, and for the most part your sodium channels are closed, potassium channels are open so that potassium is able to move in. When we get to number two right here, and number two right here, this is our depolarization. So this is where a stimulus has come along, it has triggered the sodium channels gates to open. Some of the gates open, not all of them. So in this depolarization, you can see that things are starting to change slowly. So some of the sodium channels have opened and our sodium is starting to flow into the cell. Once we hit the rising phase, number three, right here, this is where there is no return. All of your sodium channels fly open. Those sodium ions rush inside. You have the potential across your membrane changing very rapidly. Once you hit the peak, things have changed as much as they can. We hit the falling phase. And in the falling phases, those channels close, so our sodium is not able to go in anymore. Potassium channels open, so potassium starts flowing out. You also have your sodium potassium pump starting to work, and things start to head back to normal. At number five, we kind of have an undershoot where everything flows out. You have lost all your positive ions. So in this little undershoot phase, your membrane potential actually goes even more negative for a minute because all your positive stuff has flown out. And then right there, we get back to our resting potential where sodium potassium pumps balance everything out. And we go back to normal until we're ready to send another signal. Now, your, uh, sorry, I had a brain cramp there for a second. Your nerve cells actually need a moment after this action period. Um, there is something called the refractory period, and this is a period where the uh, action or potential or the, yeah, the action potential prevents the nerve from being stimulated again. And there's like absolute refractory period and relative. In the absolute refractory period, you are not going to be able to stimulate that nerve again because it's in the middle of shooting its action potential. However, in the relative refractory period, you might be able to get it to fire again, but probably not. So this is actually really important. I'll talk about this in a second, but it basically ensures that the nerve has time to reset, and it also ensures that information only flows in one direction, which is illustrated by this diagram right here. So basically what you've got going on is you can see right here, action potential is going to be in blue, resting state is in red, and then kind of repolarization or refractory period is behind it. So your action potential, you can see we got positives here, negative on the inside. Your action potential, everything goes opposite. So the potential across the membrane shifts. As this action potential travels down the axon, it's got this period right behind it where everything is resetting. And until things are reset, your nerve cannot fire again. So action potential is traveling this way 
your refractory period is resetting behind it and then not until everything has been reset can you fire again. So this ensures that everything moves in one direction down the neuron. It also ensures that the um, this is kind of how your nerves send information because action potentials are pretty much the same. The only thing that differs is the sequence and the period of time in between them. So you can almost think of, of it as like Morse code going down the neuron to where you might have a couple of signals that are really close together with a very short refractory period in between, followed by a couple that are more spread out. So one of the ways that your body sends information through it is through the sequencing of these action potentials going down the nerves. Last thing for the day, this is insulation equals speed, and here's what I'm talking about. When I was talking about the structure of neurons the other day, I mentioned that they are wrapped in glial cells, which are kind of like insulation. The specific glial cells that wrap around them are called Schwann cells. And if you look here, going down our axon, the Schwann cells have gaps in them. Those gaps are called the nodes of Ranvier. You can see that right there, fancy name. His last name was probably Ranvier, the guy that discovered them. Um, what you have is your signal actually jumps from one node to the next. So it's kind of a strange thing, but you get your depolarization event happening right there at the node, and then it sends a signal down under the insulation until it hits the next node, and that's where the next signal happens. So rather than having kind of like a continual flow where you'd have like, if you were thinking of all those as action potentials going down the uh, axon, you've got it jumping from one node to the next and when that one fires it'll send signal the next to fire and signal the next to fire and signal the next to fire the benefit in this is that it increases the speed of transmission because rather than having to stimulate every single cell down the way you can stimulate these guys they kind of send a little signal next big stimulation event happens there they send a signal next big stimulation event happens there. So this increases the overall speed of transmission down the axon. And with that, I am done talking about action potentials. I hope that this little tutorial was helpful for you. Thanks for joining us on the Lab 207 webcast. My name is Mr. Kite, and we'll see you again.